rushing water, clean and cold. A bed that sparkles green and gold. A dreamy mountain of which I'm told hides trees of over a thousand years old. With bags of rope and a slingshot head, we travel far to find what's been said. Through a verdant maze, we watch our tread. And when darkness comes, a swinging hammock is my bed. Over boulders, through tunnels of trees, a journey completed on our hands and our knees. To climb up inside them, my soul is set free, exploring this world that no human can see. <laughs> so, so beautiful. It's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. That was a funny find, that poem. I didn't even yeah. remember writing it, though. Oh, good. Wicked. Dish out some of that cake. No. Are we rolling? Yeah. We are. My name is Waldo Etherington. In 2012, myself, Zach Bentley, and Ian Geddes set off on a six week expedition into the temperate rainforests of southern Chile in search of one of the oldest and largest trees on the planet, the Alerse. Firstly, we wanted to find these trees, which was a challenge in itself. They're in very, very remote places. Then we wanted to rig them and climb them in order to get a better appreciation of what these trees were like. I find climbing up into a tree's branches is probably the best way you can really understand a tree. These trees aren't simple organisms. They are covered in a myriad of other life because they are an entire ecosystem. And my imagination just went wild when I was thinking about what might be up there, what we might find. We started off in Valdivia. There's sea lions roaming around on the riverbanks. There's incredibly lively and colorful fish markets. And that's where we stocked up for our expedition. Sierra. 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 Melusa. Salmon. Delicioso, eh? And we had a a pretty good plan at that point. Drive maybe five hours down south and we were gonna find the Lursa Millenario, which is the second oldest fully verified tree on the planet. So this tree is 3,622 years old. Um, absolutely giant of a tree. And we'd seen photos of it and that was our first port of call. We wanted to go and find this tree and potentially climb it. So we, uh, we hired a car. <laughs> Yeah, we left Valdivia. We drove maybe an hour or two uh, before we decided to take a slight detour, thanks to this very detailed tourist information map we had, which indicated a, a road going through the center of the Valdivian Coast Reserve. We were going down a relatively standard looking gravel track that's quite wide. Mm. And then we see that like cartoon style sign oh. post on the side of the road, like halfway overgrown, yeah, like a snapped off bit of board saying, La Union, 115 kilometers with an yeah. arrow pointing into that. We were like, oh, <laughs> that must be the way. <laughs> so this five hour journey ended up taking us, uh, I think closer to four or five days. Yeah, <laughs> it was quite an adventure. It was way more of an adventure than I, uh, than I had expected <laughs> for the entire expedition. The first night we camped up, we kind of had this huge, incredible vista over the Valdivian reserves. And we were actually in the middle of a eucalyptus plantation at that point. And that was kind of our first insight into what these plantations really are. Yeah, I don't think any of us were expecting um, to see such an extent of eucalyptus plantations. It's, it's pretty unforgiving. As far as you can see, there just seems to be eucalyptus planted right up to the horizon. But it's just a shame to see such a a monoculture, really. There's a lot of sustainable forestry that goes on in Chile, and a large part of this is orientated around eucalyptus trees. Eucalyptus trees are incredibly fast growing. They create usable timber, and a lot of this timber is actually converted into wood pulp. And this is one of the main sources of income for the country as a whole. But when you walk through these forests, they just seem totally empty and devoid of life. And this became even more apparent once we actually set foot inside a, uh, inside a a lesser rainforest, but this wasn't going to happen for uh, for a week or so. <laughs> the next day we required a bit of thinking about 
and to navigate that bridge that was like just thick enough to reach the wheels. I remember saying, if it got worse than that, <laughs> yeah. we'd go back. Because we knew we could get out at that point. Yeah. And then about 20 minutes later, we just we, we drove off like a ledge. And all of us were like, oh, we're not getting back up that. Yeah. Unfortunately, we didn't film very much of this car journey because uh, we were too busy hauling the car with pulley systems, digging out, out of puddles, trying to find water, running out of food. <laughs> it's pretty stressful. Yeah, I remember um, cracking open the sweet corn can, just, yeah. just drinking it and passing it around. Passing it around, I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, I'm so thirsty. Yeah. I'm not drinking too much. <laughs> we were in kind of survival mode at that point. It's yeah. like, we don't know how far this road continues. We've kind of made all those mistakes that you hear about. We haven't told anybody exactly where we're going. Yeah. No one who drives that road, so we're not going to get found. And we've got no way of communicating with anybody. The consequences of anything going wrong were huge. Yeah. By the time we got into the rainforest, we were a well oiled machine. Yeah. We had overcome yeah. so much in that one car journey. Then we found the river. Yeah, I think we got off pretty lightly on the scale of it. Did yeah. really good. Eventually, after four days, we reached Alerta Millenario, this ancient tree that we'd been looking for. Beautiful tree, but we sort of deemed it a bit too old and magnificent and too much of kind of an icon for us to climb. We didn't want to risk pulling any branches off or damaging the plants that were growing on it. It's such an ancient organism like that. So we didn't climb it, but we did meet it. And what an incredible tree. Really, really awe-inspiring. So the next leg of the journey, we were hiking up into a really remote area that's actually um, more known for rock climbing than tree climbing. It's called Cochamo. And further in to the rainforest from Cochamo lies some very remote stands of alerta trees. So we set off up the trail and that walk turned into an absolute epic. It started raining, it was really muddy. There were leeches, really steep terrain. The trail was, was hard going. So we had to pitch camp early last night, um, partly due to the fact that our packs are insanely heavy. We're at about 50k mark each per person. We have mud up to our knees at most points in the trail. Hang on, here's Ian. Been for one more. Oh yeah. That's that? You're back in hell. It is, isn't it? Zach, what are you up to? What? Chilling. <laughs> 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 you might be here wrong. Whoa, mate, like... So we've been walking for about three days. We made our way through all the kind of lower level bamboo groves, um, through all the Nothophagus forests and gradually gaining altitude, getting higher and higher. The air was kind of getting cooler. I remember the sensation really vividly, sort of stepping into this very dark and dank grove that just had this, this kind of feeling of being old. Everywhere you looked, there were just these enormous trunks rising up out of the foliage. And uh, yeah, I realised straight away that we had found them and that we'd be able to climb them.
And when you're climbing trees like that, they're, they're called emergent trees, so they stick out above the canopy. So for the last 15, 20 meters, you're climbing above everything else around you. And you can just feel the view building up behind you. And often we'd savor that until the very last moment. And then you turn around and you've just got this incredible vista of the rest of the rainforest around you. Twenty-one feet in. <laughs> we spent about three weeks living in the rainforest there, and we all thoroughly reveled in just building camps and making fires and cooking our food and and just getting to grips with life in the forest. Getting to the top of the Alerta trees was a pretty seminal moment for me. They've been there for 3,000 years and being in a living structure like that really, really generates a, a kind of awe and respect for that organism and gives you a sense of your insignificance on this planet. You're just a speck on the timeline compared to how long these trees have been around. Climbing up into them and, and seeing how they grow and really understanding these trees from, from that aerial perspective made me realize just how important these trees are. Old rainforest trees are way more significant than plantation trees. You talk about reforesting and sustainable forestry where you can chop trees down and replant them. Trees are built on top of dead trees. If you then chop down the trees and remove the timber, you are halting that entire ecosystem there. You're cutting it short and ultimately destroying it. Death is a huge part of life in rainforests, and a plantation of eucalyptus is not a drop in the ocean in terms of its biological significance and its environmental significance, as opposed to true ancient forest. The alerta trees are filled with epiphytes, these plants that grow on the tree, and vines and lianas. There's a huge amount of decomposing matter up there, old leaves and branches that have got caught up, and decomposed into these big balls of soil. And it's this that really acts as a carbon sink and, and really stimulates so much growth up there, so much life. And they're just so much more efficient at producing oxygen and, and working as a biological organism than the, than the eucalypts are. And uh, for me, that was, it kind of really just hit me quite hard, the, the difference in the forest. And I just couldn't believe that people were making that comparison. You know, people were saying that you could replant a forest and it'll be the same, it's, it's not the same. If you chop down a forest like that, it's gone forever. You're not gonna get it back. It's gonna take thousands of years to grow something that's similar. Ancient forest is one of the rarest habitats we've got left on this planet and we need to protect it with everything we've got.